were talking yesterday about trust. Jana tulikuwa tunaongelea kuhusu tumaini. And we're going to continue talking about the last emotion of trust which is anger. Na leo tutaendelea kuongelea kuhusu uh, hisia za mwisho uh, za tumaini na matokeo yanayotokana na hasira. Anger is an emotion. Uh, hasira ni awile gadhabu ni hisia. And emotions are neither right nor wrong. It's what we do with the emotion that makes the difference of whether it's right or wrong, whether it's constructive or destructive. Kile tunachofanya kwa ajili ya hisia ndicho kinachoachiria ikiwa ni kizuri au kibaya, kinajenga au kinabomoa. God gave us our emotions. Mungu aliweza kutupa hisia zetu. In order to help us navigate life ili zitusaidie kupata maisha mazuri If we had no emotions we would not understand how to work through life Kama tusingekuwa na hisia hatungeweza kuelewa jinsi gani ya kuweza kufanya maishani Emotions make us aware of what is happening around us and to us and then we must choose how to act Hisia zinatusaidia kuelewa ni nini kinachotokea kando kando yetu na kinatusaidia pia kuweza kufanya maamuzi ya jinsi gani ya kufanya. What we do with our emotions determines whether our behaviors are appropriate. Kile tunachofanya kuhusu hisia kinatufanya sisi tujue ni nini cha kuweza kufanya wakati Uh, matu, ma, matendo yetu ni mazuri au hapana inappropriate kwa njia iliyo nzuri constructive or destructive cha, ya kujenga au kubomoa so what brings us to this issue of anger ni nini kinachotuleta kwenye hasira au ghadhabu well when we have feelings of being devalued wakati tunapokuwa na hisia kwamba sisi tumeshushwa au hatuthamaniki when we feel unseen or unheard wakati tunapojisikia kwamba sisi hatuonekani au hatusikilizwi when our feelings our ideas our values our beliefs wakati hisia zetu mawazo yetu thamani zetu au imani zetu are ignored, dismissed or discounted. Zinapopuuzwa au kudharauliwa au kutokuthaminishwa. Perhaps we feel controlled or are the victim of someone else's aggression. Labda tunajisikia tumedhibitiwa na uh, mawazo ya mtu mwingine. Or our basic needs are being unmet. Au mahitaji yetu ya msingi hayakufikiwa Maybe we're experiencing broken promises, lies. Labda tumepata ahadi ambazo hazikutimizwa, labda ulikuwa ni uongo kwetu. Deception, uh, kuvunjwa moyo, betrayal or even abandonment. Kusalitiwa au kuachwa. We have deep pain. Tuna maumivu ya kina hurt tumejeruiwa perhaps physical uh, hurts labda majeraha ya mwili emotional or mental hurts uh, isia or even sexual abuse au labda u, 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 ukatili wa kijinsia it's a basic human need ni hitaji la msingi la mwanadamu to be heard and known kuweza kusikilizwa na kutambulika So how do we react when these basic needs go unmet? Ni jinsi gani tunajibia au tunaitikia wakati ambapo tunaona haya mahitaji yetu ya msingi haya sikilizwi au hayatoshelezwi? Do you yell? 
How do you yell? In response to, in response to. Jetu na piga kelele. Do you slam doors or throw things around? Au sisi tunafanya vitu vya tunaanza kutupa vitu na kukata tamaa. Maybe you just give the silent treatment to somebody. Labda tunanyamazia hiyo hali ambayo tunayo tunayoipata kutoka kwa watu wao. Or you just be nice and ignore it. Au sisi tunakuwa wema tu na kupuuza hayo mambo. We have a story in the Bible. Tuna hadithi katika Biblia about someone who should have been angry. Mtu ambaye aliweza kushirikisha jinsi gani ambavyo ali, alipatwa na uzuni. It's the story of Joseph. Ni historia ya Joseph, Yusufu. But there is no evidence in this story that he got angry. Hakuna ushahidi wowote ndani ya historia hii kwamba yeye aliweza kukasirika. Let's review his story. Hebu na tuipitie hiyo historia. Joseph was the favorite son of his father Jacob. Yusufu alikuwa mtoto mpendwa sana wa babaye Yakobo. He was born to Jacob's favorite wife. Alizaliwa na mke aliyependwa sana na baba yao Yakobo. There were other sons born to Jacob's other wives. Kulikuweko na watoto wengine waliozaliwa na Yakobo kwa wanawake wengine. But Joseph was the favorite. Lakini Yakobo ndiye aliyekuwa mpendwa kuliko wote. The father made him a special coat. Baba yake alimtengenezea koti ya maalum. And the brothers were jealous. Na ndugu zake wakawa na uivu kwake. And then one night he has a dream. Na siku moja akapata ndoto. And the dream tells him that his whole family will someday bow down to him. Na ndoto ile ilimwambia kwamba familia yake yote wataweza kumuinamia yeye. And the brothers say there is no way we will ever bow down to you. Na familia yake ndugu zake wakamwambia hilo jambo haliwezekani. Hakuna siku ambayo sisi tutaweza kukuinamia wewe. It will never happen. Hai, haitaweza kutokea hilo. But Joseph believed this dream was from God. Lakini Yusufu aliamini kwamba hii ndoto ilikuwa imetoka kwa Mungu. And so now not only were they jealous of him but they hated him. Sio tu kwamba walimuonea wivu lakini pia walimkataa. So when Wali, walimchukia. One day the father sends Joseph out to see how the brothers are doing as they take care of sheep far away. Siku moja Yusufu alipoenda kuwatembelea ndugu zake kule walipokuwa wanachuga mifugo. And when they see him coming they decide that they are going to kill him. Walipomuona kwa mbali anakuja wakaamua kumua. And so they grab him and they decide to put him in a pit. Walipomkamata wakamtupa ndani ya shimo. Because if they put him in a pit, a wild animal will kill him and they won't have done it themselves. Um walipomtupa mle ndani walijua kwamba siku moja mnyama atakuja atamla na ata badala ya wao kumua yeye atauliwa na mnyama. And they took his beautiful coat away from him. Na wakachukua ile koti yako koti yake nzuri wakaichukua pamoja nao. But lakini Along came some traders that were going to Egypt. Kulikuja na baadhi ya wafanyabiashara waliokuwa wanaenda kule Misri. And they decided they could make a little money. Na wakaamua waweze kujipatia pesa kidogo. And so they sold him to the traders. Kwa hiyo wakamuuza kwa wale wafanyabiashara. Now when Joseph got to Egypt as a slave, kwa hiyo wakati Yusufu alipouzwa kule Misri kama mtumwa it must have been a horribly humiliating experience. Lazima hii ilikuwa ni uzoefu ambao ni wa kushushwa viwango vya vya, vya vya juu sana. We're told he was in chains. He was in chains. 
tunaambiwa kwamba aliweza kufungwa minyororo and his neck was in a yoke na shingo lake liliweza kufungwa nira eh nira but i believe he also stood on that auction block naked na pia alitokewa na kipindi cha kuweza kuachwa uchi because when you're sold as a slave the people that are bidding for you certainly want to take a look at you kwa sababu unapofungwa kama mtumwa watu wa kule wanaokufunga wataweza kukutendea vivyote vile wanavyotaka wanaweza kukupiga na Ndiyo. Nafikiri tumeelewa eh? Asante. So, he's the favored of his father and now he is totally humiliated. Yule aliyependwa sana na baba yake, sasa amefika mahali pa kuweza kushushwa kabisa na kudhalilishwa. Wouldn't you be angry? Wewe usinge kasirika kwa hilo. Yeah. We don't read that he was. Sisi hatujaambiwa kwamba yeye alikasirishwa. He's purchased by Potiphar. He's purchased by Potiphar. Alinunuliwa na Potifa. And when he works for Potiphar, the Bible says he worked as unto the Lord na tunapo aliponunuliwa na Potifa tunaambiwa kwamba yeye aliweza ku aliweza kufanya when he was brought to Pot... he, he worked he worked as if he was working for the Lord alifanya kama vile anayemtumikia Mungu and Potiphar likes his work na Potifa alipenda kazi yake. And so he makes him ruler over his whole household. Na hivyo akamfanya msimamizi wa nyumba yake yote. Now Potiphar's wife has been watching Joseph. Hivyo mke wa Potifa alikuwa akimtazama Yusufu. And she thought he was pretty good looking. Na akamuona akaona kwamba yeye alikuwa mtu mwenye umbile mzuri. And so she tries to seduce him to have sex with her. Hivyo ali thubutu kumshawishi ili waweze kufanya mapenzi na yeye. And do you know what he said? Na unajua alichokisema? He said, I will not sin against my God. Alisema siwezi kamwe kufanya dhambi kinyume cha Mungu wangu. Now do you know how old Joseph was when he was sold into slavery? Na unajua alikuwa na umri gani wakati ule alipouzwa kama mtumwa? He was 17 years old. Alikuwa na umri wa miaka 17. He was a teenager. Alikuwa kijana kabisa moto moto. Sent to a foreign country. Amepelekwa katika nchi ya kigeni. He didn't know their language. Hakujua lugha yao. He didn't know their customs. Hakujua mila na tamaduni zao. He's totally away from family and anyone that would see whether he's living right or wrong. Yeye alikuwa mbali kabisa na familia yake na mtu yeyote aliyemjua alikuwa mbali nao. And when he's seduced by Potiphar's wife, na wakati aliposhawishika na yule mke wa Potifa, I'm sure she was very beautiful ana ana kamuona kwamba na yule mwanamke alikuwa pia mzuri and he could have chosen to sin after all there wasn't anybody there that would know angeweza kuchagua kufanya dhambi kwa sababu kulikuwa hakuna mtu yeyote wa kuweza kumuona but joseph didn't lakini yusufu hakufanya hivyo why kwa nini because he had taken god with him to egypt kwa sababu alimchukua mungu pamoja na yeye kule misri 
He didn't leave God back there with mom and dad. Hakumwacha Mungu kule ambako baba yake na mama yake walikokuwa. And so he chose to live for God regardless of where he was. Hivyo ali amua alichagua kuishi kumuishia Mungu bila kujali hali na mapito aliyokuwa akipitia. Now you would think if a person is living for God life would go really well for them right? Na sasa unaweza kufikiria ikiwa mtu anamuishia Mungu maisha yanaenda yanaenda vizuri kabisa si ndio? Well it didn't for Joseph. Lakini haikuwa hivyo kwa Yusuf. Instead badala yake the wife went to her husband and told Potiphar that Joseph had tried to seduce her. Ah uh, mke wa Potifa alienda kwa mumewa akamwambia huyu Yusuf alitaka kunibaka. And so Potiphar throws Joseph into jail. Hivyo Potifa akamfunga Yusuf akamtia gerezani. Now the jails are nice like ours today. Um, gereza sio nzuri kama vile ambavyo They were full of disease. Kule gerezani kumejaa magonjwa. And So. Yes. They were disgusting and wretched places. They were? They were a disgusting and wretched place. Awful place. Disgusting. Ma- full of palikuwa garbage. Ma- palikuwa mahali pa chafu. Had it been me? Had it been me if I had been Joseph? Kama mimi ningekuwa Yusufu I would have found me a little corner. I would have found a little corner somewhere. Ningetafuta mahali pekee au kwenye kona fulani. And I would have cleaned it up a little bit. Ningeweza kupasafisha kidogo. And I just sat down and felt sorry for myself. Na niweze kukaa pale na kuanza kujisikitikia. But Joseph didn't. Lakini Yusuf hakufanya hivyo. And we don't read that he even got angry. Na hatuja soma kwamba aliweza kukasirika. You know what he did instead? Unajua badala yake alifanya nini? Instead he helped to take care of the people in the jail that were ill or not well and he did what he could to help them. Aliweza kujihusisha na kusaidia watu wengine waliokuwa gerezani, waliokuwa wagonjwa au waliokuwa wanajisikia vibaya. Yeye alihusika kuwasaidia katika hali zao. And the jailer sees this. Na yule mkuu wa gereza aliona hili. And he decides to make Joseph head over the jail. Hivyo akaamua kumfanya Yusufu kuwa msimamizi uh, wa gereza. Wa wafungwa. While Joseph is there. Wakati Yusufu alipokuwa pale. Two men have dreams. Watu wawili waliota ndoto. And they're very sad and confused. Walikuwa na uzuni sana wenye kuchanganyikiwa. And one day Joseph asked them what's the matter? Na siku moja uh, Yusufu akawauliza ni nini kinachoendelea kwenu? And they both tell him that they had dreams that disturbed them in the night. Na wote wakamwambia kwamba walipata ndoto usiku uliopita. And so they told him their dreams. Wakamwambia ndoto zao. And Joseph told them what their dreams meant. Na Yusufu akawatafasiria ndoto zao zilimaanisha nini? And he told the one that he would be back serving the king. Akamwambia yule mmoja kwamba yeye atarudishwa kwenye kazi yake ya kumhudumia mfalme. But he told the other one that his head would be cut off. Lakini akamwambia yule mwingine kwamba kichwa chake kitakatwa. And then he said to them. Na hivyo akawaambia. I am here unjustly. Mimi nipo hapa gerezani yani kwa kuonewa. So when you get out please tell Pharaoh and help me get out of here. Wakati mtakapotoka humu gerezani tafadhali mwambieni Farao eh, Farao aweze kuniondoa katika gereza hili They forget Walisahau And so Joseph remains in jail 
Hivyo Yusufu aliendelea kuwa gerezani. Things are not going well for him. Mambo hayakuenda vizuri kwa ajili yake. And yet he continues to serve. Lakini hata hivyo aliendelea na huduma. One day Pharaoh has a dream. Siku moja Farao akapata ndoto na yeye. And he's disturbed by his dreams. Na alisumbuka sana kwa ajili ya ndoto yake. He calls in all his wise men but they don't know what the dream is or means. Akawaita wale wenye hekima wake lakini hawakuweza kuitambua ndoto ile. And then the butler remembers and he says there was a man in jail and he told me my dream and it came true yule mnyeshaji wa mfalme akakumbuka akasema kule gerezani kuna mtu ambaye alieniambia ndoto yangu na maana yake and so they called joseph out of jail hivyo wakamtoa kumuita yusufu kutoka gerezani and pharaoh tells joseph his dreams na farao akamwambia yusufu ndoto yake there were two dreams but they meant the same thing zilikuwa ndoto mbili lakini zilimaanisha kitu kimoja and joseph told him the meaning of the dream na yusufu akamwambia maana ya ile ndoto that there would be seven years with lots and lots of food kwamba kutakuwa na miaka saba ya shibe and then there would be seven years with no food at all na kutakuwa miaka mingine baadaye saba ya njaa kuna chakula kabisa there would be a famine kutakuwa na njaa and so for seven years joseph who the pharaoh told him he could be over the whole land and take care of this whole project na hivyo farao akamwambia yusufu aweze kusimamia ule mradi wa ukusanyaji wa chakula kilichopatikana wakati wa shibe. And so for seven years Joseph had them store all the extra food that they had. Hivyo kwa muda wa miaka saba ya shibe Yusufu aliweza kukusanya chakula chote cha ziada kilichopatikana katika ule muda wa shibe. And when the famine came they had lots of food. Hivyo njaa ilipofika ile miaka saba ya njaa ilipofika walikuwa na chakula kingi kilichowekwa galani. Now the brothers back home The brothers who are back home. Kule walikokuwa ndugu zao ndugu zake Yusufu kule kwao kanani. Are getting hungry because there's a famine there too. Wakaanza kuwa na njaa kwa sababu njaa ilifika hadi kule and they are running out of food wakao wamekosewa chakula and they have wives and children na wana wanawake wana zao na watoto wao and so they ask their father Jacob if they can go to Egypt because they heard there's food in Egypt hivyo wakamuomba baba yao ruhusa kwamba waruhusu waende Misri kwa sababu wamepata taarifa kwamba kuna chakula kule Misri And so the brothers travel to Egypt to get some food. Hivyo ndugu zake wakasafiri kwenda Misri kwa ajili ya kutafuta chakula. And guess who they meet? Um baatisha wewe ni nani waliyemkuta kule amesimamia? Joseph. Ni Yusufu. But they don't recognize him. He's grown up now. He's not 17 anymore. Lakini hawakuweza kumtambua kwa sababu ameshakuwa hayuko miaka ile 17 aliyokuwa hapo awali walipomuuza. And he dresses like an Egyptian. Na anavaa sasa kama mmoja wa Misri. And he talks Egyptian. Anaongea kimisri sasa. And they don't recognize him. Hawakuweza kumtambua. But he speaks to them through an interpreter but he understands everything they're saying. Na yeye aliongea nao kupitia mkalimani lakini huku kila wanachoongea kwa lugha yao kwao yeye anakisikia. And he accuses them of being spies. Hivyo akawa akawahukumu kwamba wao ni wapelelezi. And they tell him no we're not we're really not spies. Waka wakajieleza wakasema hapana sisi si wapelelezi well do you have family akawauliza je mnayo familia 
Yes, we have a family. We have a father back home and we have a little brother back home. Wakasema ndio, sisi tunaye baba yetu kule nyumbani kwetu na tuna mdogo wetu aliyebaki kule. And when they're talking between themselves, they say na when they're talking to each other. Wakati walipoongea wao kwa wao, they say walisema This is all happening to us because of what we did to our brother Joseph. Wakaambiana kwamba unajua haya yote yanatupata hivi kwa sababu ya yale tuliyomtendea yule ndugu yetu Yusuf. Joseph hears it and he knows exactly what they said. Yusuf anajua na anasikia vyote ambavyo wanavyosema. And he knows that their brother's conscience has been bothering them all these years. Na alijua kwamba lazima dhamiri zao zinawasumbua na zinawaambia makosa waliyoyafanya So he gives them the grain he puts their money in their sacks and he tells them Hivyo akawaachia na akachukua pesa zao walizokuja wameleta wanunue chakula akaziweka ndani ya mifuko yao na akawaambia Don't bother coming back here unless you bring that little brother with you Msirudi hapa tena ikiwa hamjamleta yule ndugu yenu mdogo aliyebakia huko nyumbani. Now let me tell you about that little brother. Uh, lakini ngoja nikwambie kidogo kuhusu huyo ndugu yao mdogo. This is Joseph's full blood blood brother. Huyu ndiye ndugu yake wa kunyonya. Au Adamu mmoja na Yusufu. His name is Benjamin. Jina lake ni Benjamin. And he's a little boy. Na alikuwa kijana mdogo. And Joseph knows that if he was his father's favorite. Na Yusufu alijua kwamba ikiwa yeye alikuwa mtoto mpendwa wa baba yake. And his father thinks he's dead. Na baba yake anadhania anafikiria kwamba yeye alikufa. Can you imagine how special Benjamin must be? Unaweza kufikiria ni jinsi gani alivyotunzwa kimaalumu Benjamin sasa. If Joseph was being spoiled, I'm sure that Benjamin was much more. Ikiwa Yusufu aliweza kutunzwa, sasa Benjamin aliyebaki alipaswa kutunzwa vema zaidi. So Joseph knew it would be practically impossible for them to bring Benjamin back. Hivyo Yusufu alipoambia yale maneno alijua kwamba hili jambo naloambia litakuwa gumu kabisa haitowezekana wamleti huyo kijana mdogo wake kwale kwake. But after the brothers are there a while the food is running out. Lakini ndugu zake waliporudi kule nyumbani kwao kile chakula kikawa kimeisha. And the children are starting to say we're hungry. Na watoto wao wakaanza kusema tuna njaa. And so they go to their father and they say we need to go back. Na hivi wakaenda kwa baba yao tena wakamwambia baba inabidi turudi kule tena. But that mean man back there. Pardon? That mean man back there in Egypt. Lakini yule mtu tulie mkutana naye kule Misri yule bwana He told us we couldn't come back unless we brought our brother to prove we weren't spies. Alituambia hivi ili nisijue kwamba ninyi ni wapelelezi inabidi mumlete ndugu yenu pasipo kumleta huko msirudi huku kwangu. And Jacob said there is no way you're taking Benjamin. Ah lakini baba yao Yakobo akasema hilo haliwezekani. Kumtoa Benjamin hapa kwangu haliwezekani. But they're all getting hungrier. Lakini njaa ndio hiyo tena inaendelea kuongezeka. And pretty soon one of the brothers comes to their father. Na muda mfupi baadaye mmoja wa ndugu zao akaenda kwa baba yao Yakobo. Judas steps forward. Huyo aliitwa Yuda. And he says. Akamwambia. Let me take Benjamin and I will protect him. Niruhusu mimi ni mbebe Benjamin lakini nitamlinda. If anything happens to him. Ikiwa lolote litamtokea. I will be responsible. Mimi nitawajibika. 
And you can take my family and do whatever you want. Na unaweza kuchukua familia yangu ifanye utakavyo. Finally Jacob gives in and lets them go back and take Benjamin. Kwa mwisho kabisa ilibidi baba yao aachie na wakamchukua yule kijana wao Benjamin kwa kule Misri. When Joseph sees his brothers coming. Wakati Yusufu alipoona ndugu zake wamekuja. And they come to get the grain. Na wamekuja kutafuta chakula. And he sees Benjamin. Na akamuona Benjamin. The Bible says he goes aside somewhere and he cries. Biblia inasema kwamba alienda mahali fulani faragani akaanza kulia. And he invites them to dinner. Hivyo akawaalika kwa chakula cha jioni. But he's still trying to claim that they're spies. Lakini bado anaendelea kuwasingizia au kuambia kuwashtaki kwamba wao ni wapelelezi. But when they come to dinner, lakini walipofika chakulani, he has their places set according to their age. Uh, wakaketi kwenye vile viti kwenye ile meza kulingana na umri wao na miaka yao ilivyofuatana They're very frightened Waliogopa sana How does this man know Amejuaje huyu mtu He's very scary Yeye anatutishia anatutisha kweli And so they eat and he gives them the food and they leave gives them the, the grain to go home and they leave Hivyo wakala baada ya kula akawaruhusu waondoke warudi nyumbani kwao But lakini He takes his gold cup akachukua kikombe chake cha dhahabu and he has it put in Benjamin's sack of grain akaweka kwenye mfuko wa nafaka uliobebwa ule wa, yus, wa Benjamin mdugu yake And after they've been gone for a little while na baad, muda mfupi baada ya wao kuondoka he sends his servant to find the gold cup and arrest whoever's bag it's in akawatuma wafanyakazi wake waende kumkamata yule ambaye atakutwa na hicho kikombe chake maalumu cha cha, cha dhahabu And of course they find it in Benjamin's sack and Hivyo, so they arrest him. Na hivyo kikaonekana ndani ya mfuko wa nafaka wa Benjamin wakamshika wakamzuia. Now had it been back when it was Joseph they would have just let him go and be arrested. Na, they didn't this time. How wangeweza kuondoka tu na wakamwacha Yusufu akiwa amezuiliwa. Instead they returned with Benjamin. Lakini badala yake walirudi pamoja na Benjamin. And they bow themselves down before Joseph. Na hivyo wakainama wote mbele ya Yusufu. And Joseph knows. Na Yusufu anajua. As they appeal to him for Benjamin's life walipokuja kumuombea rehema yule uh, eh, Benjamin ndugu yake to take one of them and their family instead of Benjamin kwamba waweze kumchukua mmoja wao aweze kukamata mmoja wao badala ya Benjamin Joseph knows they've had a heart change Yusufu alijua kwamba wata, wataweza kufanya hivyo mioyo yao imebadilika And so he says I am Joseph. Hivyo akawaambia kwamba mimi ndiye Yusufu. Oh my are they frightened now. They throw themselves at his feet. Yaani wote wakafadhaika sana na wakaangaika sana mpaka wakadondoka. And he says it's okay. Akasema ni sawa tu. You meant it for evil. Ninyi mliitenda kwa ajili ya ubaya but God meant it for good. Lakini Mungu aliifanya kwa ajili ya wema. To save many people alive. Ili kuwahifadhi watu wengi hai. So you see in all of this God was committed to Joseph's good. Unaona ndani haya yote 
jinsi gani Mungu alivyoweza kumuifa alivyoweza kujitolea kwa ajili ya usalama na uhai wa wema wa Yusuf even though everything looked like it was getting worse and worse and worse hata kama mambo yalionekana yamembadilikia na kuwa mabaya mabaya na mabaya God was working in the details. Mungu alikuwa akifanya kwa jambo moja baada ya lingine alikuwa katika hayo mambo yote. To bring it out for Joseph's ultimate good and God's glory. Uh, kuweza kumfikisha Yusufu mahali pazuri na kwa ajili ya utukufu wake yeye Mungu. Joseph had no revenge. Yusufu hakuweza kulipa kisasi. The evidence is he never resorted to anger. Uh, ni, ni kwamba yeye hakuweza kujibia au kutenda kwa asira. So, how do we resolve anger? Hivyo swali ni hili. Tunalishughulikiaje swala la hasira? First, we identify the source of our anger. Jambo la kwanza tuweze kugundua sababu ya hiyo hasira. Where did it start? Ilianzia wapi? Sometimes there's a blocked goal. Wakati mwingine kuna uh, lengo ambalo tunalo lielekea kwalo. Maybe somebody else got that promotion that we thought we were going to get. Labda Mtu mmoja amepata kuinuliwa alafu tunafikiri sisi wote tutafikia huko. And we're angry. Na tunakasirika. Because they didn't deserve it and we did. Kwa sababu wale hawakustahili labda sisi ndio tulistahili. Perhaps there's an unmet need. Labda kuna hitaji la msingi ambalo halikufikiwa. Your family didn't really care about you and they didn't treat you kindly or well. Labda familia yako haikukutunza vizuri, haikukushughulikia vilivyo ili iliweza kukutendea mabaya. You were dismissed and ignored. Wewe uliweza kupuuzwa na kudharauliwa. And now you're angry. Sasa umekasirishwa na hilo. So, what are you going to do? Unafanyaje? How are you going to get what you want? Una, unaenda kupataje kile unachokitaka? Ki, well, will anger get you there? Je, hasira yako itakufikisha kwenye lengo? I want to tell you a story. Ngoja nikwambie historia hadithi fulani. There was a woman named Ruth who came for me, to me for counseling. Kulikuwa na mwanamke aliyeitwa Ruth aliyenijia mimi kwa ajili ya kuhitaji ushauri and we walked through a lot of her issues na tuliweza kushughulikia baadhi ya mambo yake but as we worked through i was hearing this continual anger at her mother tulipokuwa tunashughulikia yale mambo aliyokuwa anayapitia nilikuwa ninasikia kwamba ndani yake kuna bado kuna hasira fulani imeba iko ndani so we talked about her mother na ilikuwa kumhusu mama yake hivyo tukamwongelea sana mama yake her mother was cruel her mother was cruel mama yake alikuwa mtu mbaya she would kick her aliweza kuwa anampiga as a little child she would hit her Uh, wakati alipokuwa bado mdogo alimfanyia hivyo pull her hair kukokota nywele zake sometimes shut her in the closet wakati mwingine kuweza kumfungilia na na kabatini she hated her mother hivyo akamchukia mama yake because this was continual it wasn't just a couple of times it happened over and over and over and over sio kwamba ni jambo ilitokea tu kwa muda fulani mmoja tu lakini lilikuwa jambo endelevu alikuwa akimtendea hayo mabaya daima she hated her akamchukia mama yake kabisa so one day as we are going through the process of counseling. Ah, uh, siku moja tulipokuwa tunaendelea na mchakato ule wa 
ushauri I asked her if she would consider forgiving her mother. Nikamuuliza ikiwa atalithamini wazo hili la kuweza kumsamee mama yake. And she said, I'll think about it. Na akasema nitalifikiria hilo jambo. The next week she came back. Ah, uh, wiki iliyofuata akarudi. And she said, I've decided to forgive my mother. Akasema nimeamua kumsamee mama yangu. Now her mother had been ill for a while. Na mama yake alikuwa mgonjwa kwa muda fulani. And she had all these years refused to see her mother. Na miaka yote hiyo alikuwa amekataa kwenda kumuona mama yake. Even though her mother was ill, she wanted nothing to do with her. Hata kama mama yake aliugua, yeye hakutaka kujihusisha na lolote kwa ajili ya ugonjwa wa mama yake. So her brother was taking care of mom. Hivyo ndugu yake ndiye alikuwa anamtunza anamwangalia ana, ana na kumtunza mama yake. When she decided to forgive her mother. Wakati alipoamua kumsamee mama yake, she went to her brother. Alimwendea ndugu yake. And she said I will help take care of mother. Akamwambia nitasaidia katika kumuuguza mama. So she started helping to take care of her mother. Hivyo akaanza kumshughulikia yani kumuuguza mama yake. And she started building a relationship with her mother. Akaanza kujenga mahusiano mazuri na mama yake. And one day her mother became very ill and ended up in the hospital. Na siku moja mama yake akazidiwa na ugonjwa mpaka wakampeleka hospitali. And her mother was in great pain and very ill. Na mama yake alikuwa katika maumivu makubwa kwa sababu ya ugonjwa ulizidi. Her mother said to her, Mama yake akamwambia, I just feel like dying. Ninajisikia kufa sasa hivi. I just want to die. Nataka nife sasa. And Ruth looked at her mother and she said, Mom, you're not ready to die. Ruth akamwangalia mama yake akamwambia mama bado hujawa tayari kufa. So the next day Ruth went back. Siku iliyofuata Ruth alirudi pale hospitali and shared the gospel with her mother. Akamshirikisha mama yake habari njema injili. Because she had begun being concerned about her mother's soul. Kwa sababu alianza kujisikia kujali nafsi ya mama yake because she knew her mother would go to hell kwa sababu alijua kwamba mama yake akifa ataenda kuzimu and she really didn't want her mother in hell hivyo hakutaka mama yake aende kuzimu so she shared about Jesus Christ hivyo akamshirikisha habari za Yesu Kristo and her mother repented and received Jesus Christ into her life. Mama yake akatubu na akampokea Yesu kuwa bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yake. And the next morning mama died. Na siku iliyofuata mama yake akafariki. Ruth had no regrets. Ruth hakusikitika. Because she had forgiven her mother and she knew that her mother was in heaven. Kwa sababu alikuwa ameshamsamea mama yake na alijua kwamba mama yake anaenda mbinguni. So when you're struggling with anger, hivyo unaposumbuka na kupambana na hasira, pray and ask God for guidance, wisdom and understanding. Omba na umuombe Mungu akupe hekima na uelewa. Determine not to ruminate over the hurtful negative events. Uh, uh, a jihakikishie kwamba wewe hutaweza kufanya vitendo vilivyo kinyume and determine how you're going to handle this na ujiweke mikakati ya jinsi gani unaenda kulishughulikia hilo swala do you need to go and confront the other person and talk about it ungejisikia vizuri kwenda kwa mtu mwingine na muongelee hilo jambo will you seek reconciliation au utatafuta kusuluhishwa and if there is no reconciliation na ikiwa hakuna usuluhisho uh, usuluhisho then perhaps you need to follow the guidelines of Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 to 17 
labda itabidi ufuate maelekezo yaliyo katika kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya 18 aya ya 16 na 17 And regardless of what their decision is are you willing to forgive them Bila kujali hali vile ilivyo je ume, una, unaona umuhimu wa kusamehe Remember Kumbuka Unforgiveness Kutokusame is like drinking poison. Ni kama vile kumeza sumu, kunywa sumu. And hoping the other person dies. Na wewe unadhania labda mtu mwingine ndio atakayo kufa na sumu liyo kunywa. So I would suggest if you're struggling with anger. Mimi ninge pendekeza hivi. Ikiwa unasumbuliwa na hasira. Go back and find what the core of the problem is. Jirudi mwenyewe na uwaze kutafuta ugundue sababu ya iyo asira ni ipi. Seek God and His wisdom. Mtafute mungu na ekima yake. And be willing to forgive. Na uwe na moyo wakusame. Thank you. Amen. Amen.